Ja pierdzielę. 44N 74N 0 dał na golibordy 100 zł. Zareagujesz dla widza? Stalker tak hasz waj podkreślenie o w podkreślenie d podkreślenie tak? wielka podkreślenie pała. <laughs> Już patrzę, już patrzę. Dziękuję bardzo za potężny donatę. This is the definition. Ty to jest iceberg, tylko że po angielsku. Myślałem, że to tylko u nas są takie rzeczy. Można w teorii obejrzeć, no widz wysłał potężną kwotę, no. Ale o czym? Aj, luj. Będzie głupio, to się wyłączy. Made up of the worst of the worst. Jak najszybciej. Jak najszybciej. Aha, ja znam tę grę, to jest yy, taka sraka chyba. Kojarzy ją. Sexy Beach is a video game series developed by the Japanese company Illusion, who will come up again later for another title they've made. The Sexy Beach series is primarily known for its adult content, focusing on the interactions between the player and the various female characters. The setting of the game is typically on a beach or resort, where the player can interact with these characters in a variety of different ways, Kto most artyst? of which being to explicit. Pytaj. The gameplay involves dating to? simulation and visual novel elements, and you're meant to engage in conversations with the characters, with the objective often revolving around a... Czekaj, ale to są gry zakazane jakieś? W jakimś kraju? Tu będą takie gry? ...developing a relationship Anon? that leads to what I'll call gameplay encounters. Sexy Beach has been controversial mainly due to its explicit content. In Japan, it falls under the category of eroge or erotic games, but has faced criticism and legal challenges in other countries. <laughs> the depiction of certain activities, especially given the questionably youthful appearance of some of the characters, has made it slightly infamous. Due to its nature, Sexy Beach and its sequels have had a very limited release outside of Japan, often confined to specific adult-oriented platforms, or requiring modification or censoring to comply with local laws and regulations regarding explicit content. Ty, ale czekaj, czemu to jest zakazane, a strony priory są legalne wszędzie? No może nie wszędzie, ale ogólnie tak. A to jest zakazana jakaś gierka? Kawaii Killer is a mobile game that garnered attention for its unique blend of cute oh, aesthetics and friends. violent gameplay. Pamiętasz? Developed by Tabamasu Games, a small independent game studio, Kawaii Killer was released in 2014. The game features a vibrant, wiem. colorful art style, typical of Kawaii culture, which is cute in Japanese, which is a, obviously made to... A, to jest coś jak ten, jak... Tylko, że tu się strzela w lisy i krew leci. ...appeal to extremely young children. In the game, players assume the role of a cartoonish character named Davy, who is a trapper in a telefon, forest yes. of cute animals. The gameplay is very simple and only involves various tapping Czemu and swiping actions to catch and dispatch of the animals in the game. Ja w bardziej brutalne gry grałem na gry.pl czy tam innych stronach na informatyce. Very gory way. Upon its release, Kawaii Killer obviously faced criticism and controversy for its... To, jest, to nie jest brutalna gra. W Sword Sandals się dało więcej zrobić niż tu. Graphic depiction Sword of violence and against the cute cartoon-like animals that are made to appeal to younger audiences. The surge of complaints made against the game from parents no, and young children Sword and had it eventually removed from the App Store and Google, and Google Play. With Apple issuing Jedyna a state... jest taka, że są ładne zwierzątka i tyle. Pieprzone ścierwo. ...saying the app concept is not appropriate for the App Store in its current state. Widzisz However, to? children who've already downloaded the game are still able to play it. Postal is an extremely controversial video game developed by Running With Scissors, first released in 1997. <laughs> it's best known for its dark themes że wtedy pirat, ale and extreme violence, and the game has been subject of debate and controversy, particularly in the context of the portrayal of mental illness <laughs> and societal ja The game follows the story of a character only known as the Postal Dude, who believes he is the sole individual in his town that isn't affected by an airborne agent supposedly released by the US Air Force. That he calls the hate plague. This leads him on a violent rampage through various Granada locations, Amiga? including a ghetto, train station, trailer park, truck stop, and eventually a school full of children. The narrative was presented through post Aha, dobra, była szkoła pełna dzieci się tam strzela w tej grze. Okej, okay, zakazujemy, wiadomo. Ale możesz oskurować człowieka na ulicy nożem i nie ma cenzury. Okej, okay, okej, okay, ale nie, ma więcej niż 18? Możesz to kupić w każdym empiku, nie ma problemu. Perspective, a company Ale co? Do dziecka? Banujemy to. Pieprzony gówno. 
Postal plays is an Ale to jest głupota. Czemu są takie niby głupie rzeczy zakazane? Bo jak strzelasz do ludzi w GTA, to nie wywoła w tobie agresji, ale jakby tam były dzieci, to ty byś wyszedł na ulicę z kałachem? No to kto to wymyśla? Co za różnica? Przecież to jest gra. Isometric shooter, where the player navigates through different levels, engaging in gunfights against various enemies. The game's primary objective is to kill a certain number of enemies in the area to progress. The game stands out for its. To były czasy, gdzie gry takie jak no może ta gracja, no inne czasy w sumie więcej było zakazane w gierkach może no. Lack of a conventional narrative structure and its focus on the protagonist's actions and mental state, rather than just the traditional storyline. Which initially depicted the postal dude attempting a massacre at an elementary school, only to find his weapons to be ineffective against the children. As they all laugh at him and his mental state deteriorates further, he finds himself restrained in a mental asylum as satanic and hellish images cover the screen. However, the ending was later changed in Postal Redux due to what the developers called an increasing prevalence and decreased shock value of school shootings. The revised ending features the burial of an unknown person, believed to be Postal Dude's funeral. Harvester, released in 1996, isn't it? adventure game. It's best known for its surreal narrative and extremely gory content, and the game stands as a distinctive and extremely The game folds in the small American farming town of Harvest in 1953, where the teenager Steve Mason awakens with no memory of his past. The town of Harvest is a peculiar and unsettling place, no, filled with bizarre and hostile characters who seem like twisted parodies of real people. When Steve goes out, to wygląda totalnie jak takie gry, w które nikt nie chciał grać na gry PL, bo też były takie dziwne gry. Tylko że taka sraka to była, a wiesz, mogłeś grać w Florence Sandals albo w tego kaktusa takiego i tak dalej. No dużo fajnych gier. Nadal gramy w niektóre. The town, who he was or what he's doing here, he has always met with the same eerie reply. Well, you always yeah. were a kidder, Steve. You always were a kidder, Steve. Well, you always were such a kidder, Steve. However, most of the townsfolk persistently urge him to join the mysterious Order of the Harvest Moon, based in the lodge, which is a huge building within the town, which becomes Steve's new main objective. Steve's exploration leads to Stephanie Potsdam. Co będzie grane po Soulsach? Małpki plus szkoła życia, a potem znowu Soulsy. Who shares his same amnesiac condition. Energik na Together they seek to uncover the truth behind Harvest and find. Ja energika oglądałem chyba to był on jak mówił po co są słupki w PS2 na karcie pamięci. Way to escape. The lodge becomes central to his quest as to gain entry. Steve is given a new task each day by the lodge. Beginning with petty acts of vandalism that quickly escalate to theft and arson. With each task having unforeseen and tragic circumstances that usually result in someone's accidental death, murder, or even the suicide of a mother and her child. Meanwhile, driven by their mutual fear and reliance on one another, Steve and Stephanie become lovers. As Steve gains entry to the lodge that he believes must hold the answer to a strange condition and delves deeper into the building and is forced to confront twisted moral lessons that invert traditional values, like how the lodge believes charity is futile and how you should not respect the elderly as they're physically useless. As Steve reaches the top of the Dreamlight Lodge, the climax reveals an actual twist, being that Harvest is a virtual reality simulation controlled by scientists from the 1990s, aiming to transform average individuals into serial killers by desensitizing them to violence. The game culminates in a moral <laughs> choice for Steve. He can either murder Stephanie and be brought back into the real world, thereby embracing a life of violence, or if you refuse to harm Stephanie, you'll face death in the real world. This decision leads to drastically different endings. Choosing to kill Stephanie results in the game showing a final cutscene, where Steve is released into the real world, but becomes a remorseless killer influenced by its experience in the simulation. Or by choosing to live a life with Stephanie in the fake world, Steve lives a peaceful life within the simulation, but is rendered brain dead in reality. Is obviously stirred controversy with its graphic to violence, dark and the exploration of societal and moral decay. Nie umiem w angielski, przetłumacz dla widza. No generalnie chłop mówi tak. Nie z was sraka, nie grajcie w to nigdy. Opowiem wam czemu to jest gówno. Ta skrót. I opowiedziałeś, że to jakaś sraka. Manhunt was developed by Rockstar North and released in 2003. Manhunt? It's an extremely guy controversial gaming? action stealth video game known for its graphic violence and dark themes. 
The game's story centers around James <laughs> Earl Cash, a death row inmate who finds himself unwillingly cast in a deadly game so orchestrated by the figure known as the director. Us. The game begins with journalist Mel Powers reporting on the execution of our character, James Earl Cash. However, Cash's execution is a sham. He's been sedated and awakens to find himself at the mercy of the director, who communicates to him through an earpiece. The director promises Cash his freedom in exchange for participating in his games. Cash must eliminate gang members referred to as hunters across various like <laughs> Spójrz na tą grę i sobie pomyśl, że takie coś kiedyś było zakazane za jakąś zbyt brutalność, zbyt dużą brutalność. No przecież... Cations in Castle City, all whilst being filmed by CCTV to create the director's dream snuff film. <laughs> Cash's journey takes him through a series of derelict and dangerous environments, each controlled by different gangs. There's the Hoods, which are Cash's first grand, adversaries, no. which we consist of criminals and corrupt police officers. The Cerberus, which is the director's personal security unit, who are also responsible for moving she. Cash between locations. There's the Skins, which is a Nazi skinhead gang. The War Dogs, which is a... Stare gry, to muszą być skiny. Ze swastyką. No to jest no, stare gry i stare filmy, to zawsze to samo było. The War Dogs, which is a sadistic paramilitary group that kidnaps Cash's family, which just only serves to inspire his violence. Ej, ale system walki taki? Which is an outlaw gang Spoko nawet. Into Hispanic Dodać przewroty i Dark Souls 2. And the psychopathic <laughs> baby faces. And the smileys which are a group of former asylum inmates. Cash's quest for survival quickly turns into a quest of vengeance when the director betrays him, ordering the war dogs to murder his family. The remaining war dogs attempt to recapture Cash, but he manages to eliminate them and team up with a journalist who reveals the director's true identity, being Lionel Starkweather, a former film producer turned snuff film ring operator. The final act of the game sees Cash navigating through a police and SWAT infested city to reach Starkweather's mansion, before finally killing Starkweather himself. The game concludes with the journalists exposing Starkweather's crimes and the police's compliance, while Cash's fate remains Ale unknown. But why would such a game be? Why would there be such a game? Because the man is close to him. It's such a film. Starszy od tej gry, bardziej, dużo bardziej brutalny i nie był zbanowany, bo to film, a gra to coś nowego i się bali, że mózg wypierze? Przecież ta gra w ogóle wygląda jak sraka. Czy to jest zbyt brutalna gra? Kogoś chyba popieprzyło w tamtych czasach. Kogoś serio popieprzyło. Manhunt faced several bans and restrictions in several countries due to its violence, including being made entirely illegal in Australia. Pisz sobie człowiek z blizną, jak yy, tego. Kolegę pod prysznicem piłą mechaniczną zabija mafiozo za to, że nie wiem, oni chyba myśleli wtedy, że on jest jakąś wtyką czy coś takiego, że sześcioną. To jest brutalna scena ze starego filmu, bardziej brutalna niż cała ta sraka gra. Co to ma być? Ej, serio ludzie kiedyś się bali gier komputerowych, tak jak dzisiaj się boją sztucznej inteligencji. Trzeba wszystko banować, debile. Ale film ma gra to różnica, no właśnie, film bardziej jest brutalny niż to gówno. Bo oni kiedyś myśleli, że gra to wiesz, jak grasz, to ty wyjdziesz na ulicę z piłą mechaniczną, bo w tej grze tak się chodzi z piłą mechaniczną i kogoś tym zaatakować. Ale nie mówię, czy był dobry czy zły, tylko chodzi mi o to jakby, czemu to banują. No to jest głupie, nie? Half-Life. However, in 2013, it became a standalone game due to its popularity. The game follows Ayan Simon, Masoneri a Rixola? young man, who wakes up in a gloomy alley after being hit by a car. He finds himself in a nightmarish version of a Swedish city, filled with Austra darkness and a sense Austra of foreboding. As Simon attempts to find his way home, he encounters a series of deformed... Ej, to wygląda jak te horrory od Quinto. Te takie ze Steama. Od Chillas. ...and terrifying monsters, with each Ale encounter being strzelać. more disturbing than the last. The plot thickens as Simon explores various locations in the city, from decrepit apartment buildings to a subway station. Each location presents its own set of challenges and horrors, with the environment becoming increasingly surreal and menacing. Reflect. Ay, to jest chyba Sony Ericsson. Co to za telefon? Challenges and horrors, with the environment becoming. Co ba? Pamiętasz? Coming increasingly surreal and menacing, reflecting Simon's mental and emotional turmoil. Simon's journey begins in confusion and fear as he tries to navigate the hostile city. His first major challenge comes when he finds a man who had texted him earlier in the game for help, now dead in a bathtub. The discovery marks the beginning of Simon's descent into the game's nightmarish world. 
A significant emotional moment for Simon occurs when he meets Sophie, his childhood friend and unrequited love. Standing on the edge of a rooftop, after Simon confesses his love for her, Sophie rejects him, with their encounter ending tragically with Sophie's suicide. Throughout the game, Simon faces various choices, such no as whether or not was. to confront or flee from the monster known as Carcass, and whether or not to turn over his gun to a doctor he encounters late in the game. These two decisions influence the story's direction, <laughs> and lead to completely that. different endings. <laughs> the game's climax is in Simon's house, where it's revealed that the entire story was a product of Simon's imagination. After his car accident, Simon is now wheelchair-bound and depressed. Ah. and was advised by his therapist to write about his feelings. The horrifying journey of monsters represents Simon's inner mod? battles and trauma, with the monster carcass that seemed to be constantly following Simon, representing his declining mental state, and the doctor who you could turn your gun over to, representing Simon's therapist. Cry of Fear features multiple endings, each dependent on the player's choices throughout the game. If the monster carcass wasn't killed, and Simon didn't give his gun to the doctor, in this ending, Simon succumbs to his darkest thoughts. And feeling utterly hopeless and trapped in his own mind, he kills Sophie and his therapist, which is also followed by Simon huh? taking his own life. Yeah. His uh -huh. suicide note expresses his deep resentment and a desire for his body to haunt all those who find him. If Carcass again wasn't killed, and Simon does give the gun to the doctor, this ending sees Simon's unresolved feelings for Sophie leading him down a dark path. After killing yeah, Sophie, he commits down. suicide, and his suicide note reveals his twisted reasoning as he believes he can now possess her forever, as he never got over his rejection. If Carcass was killed and Simon didn't give the gun to the doctor, Simon directs his anger and blame towards his therapist, whom he kills before yeah, killing himself. In this ending, his suicide note suggests that he believes his therapist's methods worsened his condition. He also expresses a wish that Sophie never learns of his actions. And if Carcass was killed and Simon did give the gun to the doctor, the ending presents a dramatic confrontation between Simon and his fictionalized book self. The real Simon experiencing a mental breakdown believes he's killing his imaginary counterpart. However, in reality, he fatally shoots two police officers. Simon is then admitted to a mental hospital under the care of his therapist, which is somehow probably the most hopeful out of these endings. We're now moving on to level two of the iceberg. Custer's Revenge was released in 1982 ah, <laughs> by Mystique for the Atari 2600 and is often called one of the worst games ever made. The game features a character modeled after General George Armstrong Custer who fought in several wars against Native Americans and the game's objective is really simple. The player controls a pixelated Custer, <laughs> depicted with an exaggerated pencil, as he attempts to cross a field Sensor under arrow things attack, things to reach a naked Native American woman tied that. to a pole. Once you reach the pole, you mash the action button as fast as you can. The better you mash, the more points you earn, with the game restarting after getting 50 points. I'm not going to explain ah. what mashing the action button does, as I'm sure you can use your imagination. Grasp the game is simple and repetitive, door. and was part of a series of adult-themed games released by the company which sought to exploit the video game industry for sensationalized adult content. The development of Custer's Revenge did not involve any significant or technological gameplay innovations. Instead, it relied solely on its shocking content to generate sales and publicity. As Custer's Revenge faced legal challenges, protests, and calls for its ban. Though the game's designer, Joel Miller, said Custer was seducing the maiden and that she was a willing participant. Stuart Keston, president of America Multiple Industries, the company who published the game, stated, Our objective is not to arouse, our objective is to entertain. When people play our games, we want them smiling and we want them laughing. Oh, yeah. Released on October 2014, oh, yeah. the teaser trailer for Hatred was anything but ordinary. My name is not important. What is important is what I'm going to do. It portrayed the game's main character, expressing their disdain for humanity, gearing up to embark on what they called their genocidal crusade. In Hatred, you play as the antagonist, no, a disturbed man completely disillusioned with the world and humanity. Is Fueled by pure hatred, he embarks on a violent killing spree with one simple goal, to eradicate as many human lives as possible is fake, but he himself is like... taken down. Oh, the gameplay is uncompromisingly violent, and the game itself takes on an isometric point of view, with the objective being pretty straightforward, navigate through various levels from the suburban neighbourhoods <laughs> to police no? stations, 
and it's dominate every living soul. Hailing from Poland, destructive creations were relatively new to no the gaming way. scene when they launched Hatred. In fact, Hatred was their debut Bile title. Gurum. The game was heavily inspired by the twin stick shooters from the arcade era, but with an obvious and somewhat oh, fine art twist. The developers aimed to create a game that, in their words, avoided politeness, colorfulness, and any sort of philosophical undertones. They sought to create a game Ty, ale kojarzy, że z tą grą było coś takiego, że miała być taka wielka, brutalna gra, wyszło zasrane gówno, czy nie? Of the industry's past as a rebellious medium and purely surface-level entertainment, was the game in its trailer was designed to provoke. The CEO of Disruptive Creations expressed surprise at the scale of the reaction it received, as he firmly believed the game didn't cross any moral boundaries. Asserting that those who disagreed could just choose not Aha. to play. The team has often stated that they intended <laughs> okay. for hatred to be a response to the trend of games becoming more politically correct, as their true aim was to push boundaries. Among actual players, reactions were divisive. While the game garnered a cult following of those who appreciated its no holds barred approach to violence, many felt it gratuitous, having very Ale little impact other pieces. than the initial shock value. The mainstream media, often less forgiving than the specialized gaming outlets, Called it the, the most, most violent video game in history <laughs> and one of the most controversial games of all time. Hatred's dark themes even led to its temporary removal from Steam, although accompanied with a personal apology from Gabe Newell himself, who was later reinstated, citing an error in its removal. Hatred's physical release was not without controversy either. It became the first game to earn an adults only rating from the ESRB solely for its extreme violence. Yeah, this made mainstream <laughs> retail distribution in the United States nearly impossible. <laughs> ja pamiętam, to jest stara gra, czaj, z którego ona jest roku? Hat Red. A nie, 2015, to chyba zanim ona wyszła, pamiętam, bo ona długo chyba wychodziła. I kojarzę, że takie mity o niej chodziły, że tam będzie się dało wszystko zrobić, że tam się torturować ludzi nawet będzie dało wszystko. I wyszła taka sraka po prostu. Console manufacturers prohibit adult-only rated games on their platforms. Fast forwarding to June 1st, 2015, Hatred was finally released to the public. The game used Unreal Engine 4 to create its game world, and at the request of Epic Games, the developer of the Vitam Unreal Engine, Diablo. the logo was removed from the game and trailer. Fart and also, just before the game's release, Twitch announced the ban on all adult-only rated games, thereby prohibiting Hatred from being streamed on the platform. Left Behind Eternal Forces is a real-time strategy game developed by Left Behind Games in 2006. It's based on the popular Left Behind series of Christian apocalyptic fiction by Chris LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. The game combines religious themes with strategy gameplay, and it's set in the post-apocalyptic world following the biblical event of the rapture. In Left Behind Eternal Forces, players find themselves in a post-rapture New York City. According to the game's narrative inspired by Christian beliefs, the rapture has taken all true believers to heaven, leaving the rest of the world to face the consequences. The player leads a group of tribulation forces, fighting against the Antichrist's army, the gameplay involves building up a base, gathering resources and recruiting and training units. Players must manage their own team of characters, each with specific skills and abilities. The game focuses not on just military strength, but also on spiritual warfare. Players need to maintain the faith of their units while combating the Wszystkie te gry, praktycznie każda w tych gier, co tu są pokazane, mają tylko kontrowersyjną otoczkę, bo sam gameplay z tych gier, czy samo cokolwiek, co w nich jest, jest słabe po prostu. Jak to możliwe, że te gry są zakazane? ...and completing various missions. One of the unique aspects of Left Behind Eternal Forces is its emphasis on non-violent options. While combat is a part of the game, Players no, are also encouraged to use prayer and spiritual influence to sway enemies onto their side. However, Left Behind Eternal Forces generated controversy primarily due to its I religious themes and the portrayal of spiritual warfare. Critics and some religious groups were concerned about the game's blending of violent strategy gameplay and religious content, debating on whether or not it's appropriate to mix the gameplay involved in combat and conversion with the teachings of Christianity. The game also faced criticism for its portrayal of non-Christian characters and the concept of converting or battling against them. I personally reviewed this aspect as potentially promoting religious intolerance or just being plain divisive. Despite the controversy, the game found a niche audience amongst fans of the Left Behind series and those interested in Christian themed games. Left Behind Eternal Forces is not only a unique. Dzięki dawaj krak. Za trzy lata. Witam. Unique title on this iceberg, but just in video games. Dla... No, racja, Black Blue. To jest dyskryminacja, nie? Hong Kong 97 is a 2D shoot em up game, infamously known for its controversial and bizarre content, developed by Happy Brucella. Soft Limited. 
also known as the Japanese writer Kurosawa and his friend who helped him make the game. It was released in 1995 uh. for the Super Famicom, which is the Japanese version of the SNES. The game gained notoriety not just for its political themes, but its extremely shocking content. The game was set in the year 1997, around the time of the transfer of Hong Kong sovereignty from the United Kingdom to China. The player controls a character named Chin, who is for some reason okay. described as a relative of Bruce Lee. Chin's mission is to eliminate an influx of people from mainland China, represented as endless waves of enemies, and ultimately defeat a resurrected Tao Xiaoping, which is a misspelled reference to the then Chinese Czyli leader co, Deng Xiaoping. Gra, w której walczy z dyktatorami i ona jest zakazana? Aha is really simplistic in its gameplay. The player is Chen. She can come at any time when you hit. The game features a single level that repeats indefinitely with no variation in gameplay or objectives. It's known for being extremely challenging, with many players unable to survive for more than a few seconds. To w Chinach jest zakazane? Now the game gains significant. To można zrobić listę gier zakazanych w Chinach. To będą też absurdalne przykłady. Nie powinniśmy ich zakazywać, tylko pokazywać i wyśpiewać ich twórców, żeby inni nie bali się wypuszczać takie gówno. Tak generalnie w większości gier to gówno, no. Zakazywanie ich jest bez sensu. Bo i tak w to nikt nie zagra. Ty, zakazanie tych gier to jest większa reklama dla tej gry i chyba najlepsze co może zrobić i państwo zakazując tego. Bo wtedy ludzie w ogóle się o tym dowiedzą i będą chcieli zagrać w taką srakę. Spojrzysz na tą grę? I ty w to nie będziesz chciał zagrać, ale jak zakazali tego, to sobie myślisz, kurde, czemu oni to zakazali? No i wtedy się zainteresujesz. Of Hong Kong 97 is because it includes a real photo of a still unidentified dead body as a game over screen, which is obviously going to shock and disturb many players. Kiszę jako pewność, że kiedyś za dzieciaka mieli na polski zrobić referat o czym chcą, no i zrobiły Diablo, gdy przyszedł... Nie pozwoliłem mu baba przeczytać? Aha, no tak kiedyś było z różnymi tymi, no. Especially considering with how tak, often you die in the game. The game has a very amateurish and crude Inne design, czasy. with poorly designed graphics and extremely repetitive music. Hong Kong 97 is remembered far... W DS2 masz miecz ognisty w lesie olbrzymów ukryty? A ja hala, bo... Aha, czekaj, bo... Aha, ty z YouTube'a pewnie widzą. I... Ja już hala bardzo nie gram. More for its notoriety rather than its gameplay quality. Now this one is a double entry. Quest for Bush and Quest for Saddam are first-person shooter games known for their political content and controversial nature. Quest for Saddam, created by Petrilla Entertainment, was released in 2003, while Quest for Bush, a mod of the former, no was released later by the global Islamic gem, media you know. front. An Al Qaeda <laughs> propaganda organization. These games gained attention for their direct reference to real world political figures and obviously being directly in contest with each other. Quest for Saddam is a low budget game set against the backdrop of the Iraq War. In the game, players go on a mission to capture the Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein. The gameplay involves navigating various well, environments in Iraq, like battling Iraqi soldiers and other enemies, with the ultimate goal of finding and capturing Saddam. The game was criticized for its simplistic portrayal of complex political and military situations, as it was an obvious form of propaganda, trivializing warfare as a whole. Quest Czy, for Bush, to jest jakiś Night of Bush arabskim kraju po prostu? Quest for Saddam, released by an Al-Qaeda propaganda group. Ja, the game's narrative was altered to target the then US president, George W. Bush. In this version, players assume the role of a jihadist fighter, with the final objective being to capture or kill the president. The mod obviously completely flipped the original game, turning it into a tool for anti-American propaganda. Whilst Quest for Saddam was criticized for its oversimplification and potential insensitivity regarding the Iraq war, Quest for Bush faced even more severe criticism. Station.exe is a relatively obscure and mysterious video game. W Rynsztoku miałeś ukrywną wielką pałek, która jest... Ja ją mam przecież! I don't even know if you can call it a video game. It's known for its enigmatic origins and connection to internet folklore, Mamio. particularly within the community of the X board on 4chan. The game has gained infamy among enthusiasts <laughs> of creepy and unconventional games, partly due to its eerie atmosphere and the mystery surrounding its creation and purpose. Station.exe reportedly originated from a disc found at a tech expo in Rochester, New York, power. an anonymous user claiming their father purchased a CD case containing two discs. While the first disc had engineering software, the second unmarked disc cool. held the game Station.exe. The game is believed to have been created with Blender, and its subsequent exploration has led to various speculations and theories about its purpose and origins. 
The player navigates through a completely blank environment and is pursued by floating faces with ambient noises adding to the eerie atmosphere. Set if you're caught by one of these faces, the game yeah. instantly closes. One of the most intriguing aspects of Station Go UFC is the discovery of numbers within the game, which some players interpreted as coordinates. Uh, know, okay. These coordinates supposedly lead to a real building in Russia, which mirrors the structure of the building found in game. This element has led to speculation about the game being part of an ARG, though no one has actually yet to go to the coordinates in Russia. The enigmatic nature of Station.exe extends beyond its gameplay. When people reportedly dissected yeah. the game's code, they claim to find a variety of unusual elements and connections to other internet forums and a creepy password protected website that still no one knows the purpose of. The Guy Game is a game that garnered significant controversy and is highly illegal today. Developed by Top Heavy Studios and released in 2004, the Guy Game is set up as a trivia quiz game and players answer questions while watching live action footage. The game features young women, often referred to as the hotties, who participate in various challenges and are filmed in locations like beaches during spring break. As players progress through the game by answering trivia questions, the live action camera footage includes scenes of the women revealing themselves, if the player answers the questions correctly. The game features a rating system that tracks the player's success, with high- Van dla widza za zdradę wielkiej pałę? Żadnej wielkiej pałę ani wielkich mieczy, proszę. Long... Zobaczę ten mnie dzisiaj. The guy game became infamous for obvious reasons. The game faced criticism for objectifying women and for its explicit content, as it was accused of promoting a sexist... Serie zakazana taka gra, podczas gdy od lat już kręcili filmy ty o... Aha, ja już rozumiem. I teraz dopiero do mnie dodało. W połowie filmu to do mnie dotarło. Po prostu te gry są z czasów, kiedy... Pieprzene duże głowy z telewizorka tylko myślały, że gry są dla dzieci. I dlatego te wszystkie gry są zakazane, bo idioci z zamkniętymi głowami nie mogli zrozumieć, że nie tylko dzieci w gry grają, nawet w latach 90. I teraz na przykład tą grę każdy by miał w dupy, nikt by tego nie zakazał, bo przecież to jest nic w tego, co się dzieje w internecie. No i też nie tylko dzieci w gry grają. The meaning portrayal of women. However, Good the bottom. controversy truly escalated when it was discovered that one of the women featured in the game was underage at the time of filming. This revelation Aha. led to legal actions and the game being pulled from shelves in several regions due to it being considered CP. Lostboy.exe is an obscure video game that gained notoriety in online communities, particularly on 4 The game itself is stylistically similar to the classic Windows 3D maze screensaver. You basically have to navigate through maze-like environments with a first-person perspective. The game's design is relatively simple, but it's distinguished by its incorporation of strange and unsettling satanic imagery within the maze's walls. <laughs> Lost Boy initially <laughs> gained attention due to a version of the game that was widely distributed that contained a virus. Hey, ale the kiedyś to łatwo było, żeby ci grę zakazali, albo dawałeś szatana, albo coś o chrześcijanach, albo coś o Al-Qaidzie. <głos> albo cokolwiek. I ci grę banowali, no. I dzięki temu potem jest nieśmiertelna ta gra, no, bo ją zbanowali, a to nie jest takie częste. First spread on 4chan was made for stealing personal information from players, including things like passwords and credit card information. The presence of the virus coupled with the game's creepy imagery added to its mystique and made it a topic of caution and intrigue. However, fairly recently, it was realized that the virus-laden version of Lost Boy was not created by the original developer, but was instead modified by an unknown third party. Somewhat Witam. recently, the original version of Lost Boy.exe was uncovered. This version free of any malicious software offers Badu players to experience the game as it was initially intended by its creator. The virus free version is essentially a slightly eerie horror game, focusing on more on creating an unsettling atmosphere rather than being a fully fledged game. We're now moving on to level 4. Super Columbine Massacre RPG was developed by Danny Ladone and released in 2005. The game is a role-playing simulation that recreates one of the most tragic domestic attacks in American history. The game's narrative Aha. closely follows the real-life events leading up to and including the event itself, focusing on the perspectives of the shooters being Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. The game starts with the depiction of Eric Harris being woken up by his mother on the morning of April 20th, 1999. Harris then calls... Czekaj, to jest gra z perspektywy tych typów, co strzelaninę w szkole zrobili? To, takie, to jest chyba najsłynniejsza, taki, jak to nazwać? Nie wiem, zamach w szkole? Jak to się mówi? 
Ta strzelanina w szkole, ta najsłynniejsza. I zrobili grę po prostu z ich perspektywy. Ja pierdzielę. We creates one of the most tragic domestic attacks in American history. The game's narrative closely follows the real life events leading up to and including the <laughs> event itself, focusing on the perspectives of Chicago. the shooters being Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. The game starts with the depiction of Eric Harris being woken up by his mother on the morning of April 20th. Aha, on grał w Duma, okay, czyli dlatego był tym, to wiadomo. Harris then calls Dylan Klebold so they can meet to finalize their plans for the attack. In the game, Harris and Klebold plant propane bombs inside the building. When the bombs fail to detonate as planned, they decide to proceed with their attack nonetheless. The game allows players to control the characters as they navigate the school, with the number of victims being determined by the player's actions. The sequence ends with the characters turning their weapons on themselves, followed by a montage of real and fictional images, including photos of the shooters and scenes of mourning. The game takes a surreal turn in the second half, depicting Dylan Klebold's journey through hell. Klebold encounters Yuck. and battles demons and characters from the video game Doom, reflecting the shooter's interest in violent video games and the mainstream media's focus on Doom's potential influence on the teen. In Hell, Klebold and later Harris meet various fictional characters like Pikachu and Bart Simpson and historical figures like Malcolm X and John Lennon for whatever reason. The game culminates in a battle against Satan. The characters are congratulated and the game concludes by returning to the school, where a press conference is held. This segment of the game includes dialogue that directly references the actual event and satisfies the political and media reactions to the massacre. The game critiques various aspects such as gun control debates, religious fundamentalism and the scapegoating of Marilyn Manson in video games and the aftermath of the shooting. Okej, okay, no czyli ta gra okay. miała tam jakieś głęb, głębie powiedzmy, tylko przyciągnęła tym taką najbardziej prymitywną w pewnym sensie rzeczą, tak? No ale się udało widać, skoro gra istnieje ileś lat i nadal jest ten... O kurde, to jest też ciekawa gra. K Reloaded is a video game that serves significant controversy upon its... No, wyobraź sobie to. Wyobraź sobie, nie wiem, miesiąc po zamachu na prezydenta idziesz do Empiku w Ameryce tamtejszego, a tam taka gra na płucy. <laughs> to jest coś mocnego. For developed by Traffic Software, it's a simulation game that aims to recreate the assassination of US President John F. Kennedy in 1963. The game's stated intention was to prove the findings of the Warren Commission, which concluded that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone in the assassination. The game is set on November 22nd, 1963, in Dealey Plaza, Ojo, Dallas, Texas, where President Kennedy was assassinated. Players assume the role lata. of Lee Harvey Oswald, positioned in the Texas School Book Depository. The objective is to replicate Oswald's shots as accurately as possible, based on the Warren Commission's report. Players are given a rifle and a task for shooting the motorcade that drives through Dealey Plaza. The game features a detailed physics engine designed to realistically simulate the reactions of the president and the other individuals in the motorcade when hit by bullets. The primary gameplay involves aiming and firing at the motorcade. Niedługo chyba mają odtajnić dokumenty na temat tego zamachu. Coś tak kojarzę. Będzie nowa gierka tym razem prawdziwa. Motorcade and attempting to recreate the bullet trajectories and wounds as reported by the Warren Commission. After each attempt, players receive a score based on how closely their shots match with the historical account, including <laughs> factors like bullet trajectory, timing, and reactions of the characters in game. JFK with immediate controversy due to its sensitive subject matter. Critics and the public widely condemned the game for allowing players to reenact a national tragedy, with many viewing it as tasteless and disrespectful. The Kennedy family at first dismay at the game's release, and it faced criticism Ale from various political and public figures. Despite the developers' claim that the game was intended as an educational tool to validate the Warren Commission's findings, the nature of the game led to accusations of exploiting a tragic event for entertainment and profit. VTech Rampage is a video game created by the independent developer Ryan Lamborn, released shortly after the tragic Virginia Tech shooting in 2007. VTech Rampage is set in a simplified representation of the Virginia Tech campus. In the game, players take on the role of the shooter, Sung Kyu Choi, who perpetrated the Virginia Tech massacre. The gameplay involves navigating through the campus and enacting the event. W jakiś w sensie zamachach takich, że jakiś typ wziął pistolet, poszedł ludzi strzelać na ulicy, w szkole, do prezydenta i takie gry robią w USA tylko. I tylko takie są manuale. 
Ciekawe. Myślicie, że mają problem tam jakiś? Events of the shooting. The game's objective is to mimic the real life tragedy, a choice that led to immense controversy. The game's graphics and mechanics are rudimentary, reflecting its status as an independent and poorly made game. The game eh, eh, ale jego? The recent and painful tragedy, obviously being highly disrespectful to the victim. Robią o tym, co mają za oknem. Ryan Lamborn, the game's developer, faced intense personal backlash, with many accusing him of seeking attention and profiting from a horrific event. His response to the controversy included Included an offer to remove the game from distribution if we received two thousand dollars in donations, but not before attracting his offer of removing the game and later admitting it was all a joke. Yeah, the critics who demanded the game's removal. KZ manager, with KZ being shorthand for the German word for concentration camp, is a simulation. Czekaj, ty to jest coś jak football manager, tylko ty zarządzasz obozem koncentracyjnym. No, ciekawe gry. Management game, where players are put in charge of a concentration camp during World War II. Mega As you can imagine, the game has been widely condemned for its insensitive and inappropriate portrayal of the Holocaust, and has been made illegal in several countries, with Germany being among them. Upon launch in the game, you're greeted with a simple question. The game asks you how you view Turkish people, and you have four options to pick from. Option one says you view them as a helpful person. Option two, you view them as a dumb person. And four says something along the lines of that you only view them as welfare parasites claiming their free monthly check. If you choose either of the kind options, the game closes immediately. In KZ Manager, players assume the role of a concentration camp manager during the Holocaust. The game's objective is to effectively manage the camp, which involves exploiting prisoners for labor, dealing with prisoner deaths, and managing the camp's finances. Ty, ale spójrz na tą grę, z jakich ona lat jest. Wyobraź sobie, jakie to byłyby popijewszone, że ktoś w dzisiejszych czasach zrobiłby taki symulator z taką dopijewszoną grafiką. Jopie. Jezus Maria, ty... Ej, przecież to jest możliwe. Aż dziwne, że nikt nie zrobił. Pewnie by było zbanowane wszędzie, no bo... No nie wierzę, czemu by nie zrobił tego ktoś, gdyby to nie było banowane. Answers. There's no overarching objective or real goal to the game. The game presents the activities in a cold managerial style, devoid of any empathy or historical context. We're now on level five. I need to issue a serious content warning from here on out, as some of these games are fairly disgusting. 2002's ethnic cleansing was developed by the American white supremacist organization, the National Alliance. Oh, you guys have a subsidiary record label, Resistance Records. Ethnic cleansing was created. If coś tuicze to oglądam w celach historycznych i naukowych. Nie popieram nic tutaj. Part of a broader ideological push by the National Alliance, a group well documented for their white supremacist views. The game was designed to be provocative, to generate shock and controversy, whilst disseminating a white supremacist message. The game itself was entirely unremarkable in its mechanics and graphics. And they shoot at the enemy. Shoot at you from outside of your view zone. Ale gra gówniana to jest. Just cheap. Rather, it was the horrendous thematic content that made it so infamous. The game is a first-person shooter. Już lepsze były podróby Minecrafta na telefon, jak ja grałem na telefonie w 2000 którymś tam, jak były jeszcze. No 100 lat, 100 lat temu to było. No podróby Minecrafta lepiej wyglądały na telefonie niż ta gra. Where the player embodying either a skinhead or clansman. It's tasked with killing stereotypical Yeah, dobra, Osek. Muszę ci tutaj małta dać na sekundę. The final boss is a fictionalized version of Ariel Sharon, the then Prime Minister of Israel, which obviously just adds to the anti-Semitic views propagated by the game's creators. In keeping with the game's theme, black characters were designed to resemble apes and emit monkey-like sounds when shot. Jewish characters are clothed as Orthodox Jews and shout "Oy vey." Mexicans, also on the receiving end of the stereotyping, exclaim, "I need to take a siesta now." Oh, did you see the obrazek? The provocative content was a deliberate attempt to further propagate the racial bias and hatred, and to quicken the pace at which the developer's long-awaited race war would begin. The game was launched on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, being the 21st of January 2002, which was obviously a calculated move intended to incite further controversy. It was yes, sold for 18 dollars and 88 cents. Another nod to the white supremacist's 14 word slogan and the numbers 88, which stand for HH, which I'm sure you can figure out. Many organizations took issue with the game, and ethnic cleansing has been repeatedly ranked Bosa. as one of the most controversial games ever made. And it just serves as a reminder of the capacity of video games to be used as propaganda. You. 
Tak, potępiamy tu wszystko. Tak, potępiamy tu wszystko. Tak, potępiamy tu wszystko. It's an adult-oriented game that blends psychological horror, mystery, and very explicit scenes. Euphoria is set up in a mysterious and closed environment, where the main character Kazuke, whose name I probably mispronounced, wakes up without any recollection of how he got there. He finds himself in a blank white room, along with six women. Ha ha! Quinta, of course, she knows. Mega sushi. As you can expect from this deep in the iceberg, none of the women are of age, excluding Natsuki, who is an English teacher at the school. Euphoria primarily involves reading text and making choices that influence the direction of the story, depending on the decisions made by the player. These decisions can lead to drastically different outcomes, some of which are extremely disturbing. The story starts with all our characters being confused by the abnormal situation. When a mysterious voice announces to them that the game will now begin. The game unfolds in a series of escape-like room scenarios, where the characters must solve puzzles and make decisions to survive. The first puzzle involves Kazuke, our character, and the only male in the group. He is named the group's unlocker. Grałeś w nowego popa. Prince of Persia? Nie grałem, nie grałem, bo w Dark Souls gram. Może zagram pomiędzy dwójką a trójką. And must select one of the women as his keyhole. I think you know what I'm saying. One of the girls being Mayuko isn't too excited by the idea and starts to panic, causing the lights to be cut by the mysterious game master. Blinding lights turn back on. Mayuko is trapped in a and is eliminated from the game. Though, as you can come to expect from a game this far down the iceberg, our character enjoys the display and becomes more ready to become the unlocker to one of his unwilling keyholes. Mini drama auto, Prince of Persia. Clock up, known for creating adult visual novels with dark and often controversial themes. The game was initially released in Japan and later translated into English due to its popularity among visual novel enthusiasts. Euphoria has a decent-sized following among visual novel fans who appreciate its complex narrative. The developers Clock Up have some other equally disturbing visual novels. Shinkuya Barreto. Dorzos dał na goli borde pięć złotych. Jutro FNAF. Czyli co? Pamiętam tą scenę. Laska została porażona prądem i zginęła, ale narobiła w gacie i chłopowi stanął na ten widok. W, tej ba w tym, co to ogl... Okay. Dzięki Dorzos. Mała szansa. Dziękuję bardzo. Uch! One Seven Seven is a Japanese video game that was released in 1986 by Macadamia Soft and was tastefully named after the Japanese legal code for doing a certain thing without the consent of the other person. The player controls a male character who pursues a female character with the intent of assaulting them. The gameplay involves navigating through various levels, avoiding obstacles and other characters to catch the female character. Czy tu chodzi o to, że gonisz babę i ją g g n no, ciekawe gry robią Japończycy. As if the player catches the female character, the game will then play a graphic and explicit cutscene that has been the primary source of the game's controversy. After which you'll see another scene of our character and the woman married. The second ending, or what people call the bad ending, happens if you fail to catch the woman. Bad ending? Jaki jest łapiesz? Ej, Japończycy. Nie, nie mogę nic powiedzieć, bo jest za blisko bana. Po prostu oglądajmy. He reaches her house and gets you arrested. The game was obviously criticized for promoting and trivializing sexual violence against women, and it was seen as deeply problematic not only for its graphic content, but also for the way it objectified women and treated a serious crime as a form of entertainment. 177 was released during a time where the video game industry was still in its early stages of exploring adult themes. However, the game crossed ethical boundaries by centering its gameplay on a terrible act. It was later recalled and re-released with slightly more conservative scenes and game. Oni zostali uwięzieni, mają smycz na szyi w tamtym poprzednim i muszą wykonywać zadanie, żeby przeżyć na przykład zadanie to metoda... Gameplay. As seems to be the theme of the lower tiers, Lolita Syndrome was developed in Japan by Kitsumi Mochizuki. Nie wiem, już im dalej jak w tym icebergu, tym więcej japońskich gier. Jest to mega susi. An individual who at the time was an illustrator for children's educational comics. What I find to be especially abhorrent is that the game was published by the company Enix, which later went on to become Square Enix, a massive game publishing company. The game was the winner of Enix's second biannual game hobby program. To wygląda jak gra. Kiedyś była telegazeta w telewizji. Klikałeś guzik 
I takiej jakości była telegazeta się wyświetlała. Coś tak bezsensownego kiedyś istniało w telewizji i to, to, to się grało w ten sposób w tą grę? Test, and thus was sponsored by them, which I just think speaks to the slightly more than strange culture regarding Lolita at the time. Released in 1983, the game takes place within a house called Mason Lolita, where underage girls, or lollies, run around the house without clothes and have to play games which involve narrowly avoiding death. Ta gra powstała jak jeszcze była komuna w Polsce, kumasz to? Tak, wtedy już Japończycy byli tak do przodu przed nami, że tworzyli takie porypane gry. Save the cartoon girls from their violent deaths and to get your reward, which is to see the cartoons without any clothes. The game was not originally advertised as containing gore and this element was only hinted at on the game's packaging. The game opened showing the five doors of Mason Lolita. Each door represents a mini game that you can take part in. The first door is the buzzsaw room. It's simple. A girl is strapped to a table and a circular buzzsaw is slowly moving. The player must choose the correct key from 10 keys in order to release the girl. After five incorrect guesses, the buzzsaw reaches the girl, who you then have to watch perish. If the player is successful in freeing the girl, you can guess what the reward is. The next game, the password room, is probably somehow the most tame. A sleeping girl is lying on the bed, and the game provides hints to the player in order to type the correct Japanese word in order to wake her up and have her take her clothes off. And the rock paper scissors room hosts a very simple game. The player plays the game of rock paper scissors against the girl, who removes a piece of their clothing each time the player wins. The final room doesn't contain a game, but rather a gallery, where the player can view images of all the cartoon girls. Lolita Syndrome was released during a time in Japan where Lolita culture was extremely popular and thus developed a cult following with Japanese otaku and game collectors during the time of its original release. In 1985, the creator of the game developed a sequel called My Lolita, which was far tamer and less violent. Tak wyglądał 85 rok w Japonii? To jest 85 rok w Japonii? My ich nigdy nie dogonimy. A sequel called My Lolita, which was far tamer and less violent, but did not sell nearly as well as its predecessor. <laughs> Zog's Nightmare was developed and released by the National Socialist Movement, a neo-Nazi organization in the United States. The game is steeped in racist and anti-Semitic and ideologies and is the spiritual successor to ethnic cleansing. The title Zog's Nightmare refers to the acronym ZOG, which stands for Zionist Occupied Government, a term used in those sorts of circles to allege that the government is secretly controlled by Jews. In the game, players assume the role of characters fighting against various groups and individuals, that the game developers tak, views enemies, jest sraka. including different races and ethnicities other than white people, that are supposedly controlled by Jewish people. The gameplay mechanics are typical of a first-person shooter. Powiedz mi, czy miałeś kiedyś po jarbie atak lęku lub po prostu silne pobudzenie? Ja wiele lat temu próbowałem jarbę po... do czasu, gdy tak mnie pobudziła, że myślałem, że po karetkę dodzwonił. No za mocą ty zrobiłeś pewnie. Za dużo kofeiny przyjąłeś, no bo tu jest trochę inaczej niż kawy czy jeden. To tak jakbyś wypił z cztery energole, no może. As I said, the game is very much inspired by ethnic cleansing and follows the same exact format. Due to its content, the game has not been widely ja nigdy distributed tak, and it can be only available to very niche ale... Demonophobia is another horror-themed game known for its extreme content and controversial nature. Developed by an individual known as Sakuma K, it's a Japanese freeware game that could be classified as survival horror. Demonophobia revolves around a young girl named Xiaomu who finds herself trapped in a hellish otherworldly dimension filled with grotesque creatures and constant threats. Ale to też pokazuje ten ranking, że po prostu kiedyś tak mówię, no. Ludzie sobie nie mogli, nie mogli uwierzyć, staruchy pieprzone, że w gry grają nie tylko dzieci i kiedyś wszystko banowali. Ja, zobacz, tu nie ma żadnej nowej gry w tym. Wszystkie gry są sprzed kilkudziesięciu lat, kilkunastu. Mm, tak wiesz, jakby najbliżej nas to, to kilkanaście lat niektóre. Te hatred było najnowszą grą, którą tu zbanowali. A i tak nie jest całkowicie zbanowana, tak chyba da się ją kupić, tylko na Steamie ją zbanowali. Więc to, to jest... Yy... Rozumiesz? Kiedyś po prostu banowali wszystko, jak leci. Bo tylko przecież dzieci grają w gry. On survival, with Xiaomi attempting to navigate through this terrifying environment, where you can... Byłeś kiedyś w Łodzi, albo masz coś wspólnego z miastem, bo nie zamierzam... Bo nie zamierzam się tam wybierać. Aha. Often see mutilated or hanging corpses, as well as fleshy creatures... Za mocno, ale wiesz, nie wiedziałem jak to dawkować, czy od tamtej pory nie wróciłem do Jerby. Aha, no to nie no, potestuj sobie po prostu mało, mało wsyp tego. 
composed of young women. The game is notorious for its violence and in a multitude of ways, each more gruesome than the last, with most of them including the alien-like monsters forcing themselves upon the middle-aged Xiaomu in different ways. And the deaths are depicted with detailed and explicit animations. The actual gameplay in Demonophobia is a combination of puzzle solving, exploration, and trial and error, though even the puzzles aren't without the disgustingness. As for instance, one requires Yaomi to urinate at a certain time, otherwise she'll become infected and die. One of the distinctive so features so of the game is its high difficulty level. So it provides little guidance, forcing players to often die, witness the animations, and repeat the scenario. Takuma K, the developer, released the game as freeware, making it available for download without charge. The game's development and release seem to have been a solo effort, with little information regarding Sakuma K's identity or motivations for creating the ah, game. The game has become somewhat of a cult classic in certain circles, particularly amongst fans of horror games and those interested in the far more extreme and obscure end of the spectrum. Now I think this next game was one of the worst on this list. I think that because that this game wasn't made by a little indie dev or one guy on a 4chan thread. This game was made by a proper game studio and was distributed and sold commercially for a number of years. Rate Play, which was developed by Japanese game developers Illusion, who are also the developers of Sexy Beach, which we featured earlier. And while Sexy Beach may have been controversial, it was only Rape Play that got a significant international attention. The game was released in 2006, Dark and it starts with our character, Masaya Kimura, being arrested for assaulting a woman. However, he is quickly released from custody and seeks revenge on the woman, Aoi, who reported him. As the game progresses, he decides to not only target the 17-year-old Aoi for his plan for revenge, but also her younger sister, 12-year-old Manika, and their widowed mother, 42-year-old Yuko. The game's plotline is told through a visual novel style format, however the more interactive scenes that the player controls are where things get much worse. After our character stalks 12 year old Manika onto a train, the core gameplay starts. Using the mouse to simulate Kimura's hand, you can move your mouse over different parts of the girl to get different reactions. The ultimate goal of the sequence is to fill what's called the arousal meter on screen, which fills out depending on where you yeah, touch so them. Up. But it somehow gets worse. After enough cursor movement, they eventually lose their clothes and will shamefully cover themselves with their hands. <laughs> the game follows the same loop as... Hey, <laughs> ...stalking and assaulting until you eventually corner and capture all three women. Once captured, our ta lista gier to tak, 90% gier, Japończycy i ich dziwne fantazje, fetysze i jak to nazwać. 5% rasizm, 5% masakry w szkołach. No, tak mniej więcej ten iceberg wygląda. Our character Kimura reveals his ultimate plan to make them all subservient to him. Despite the mother Yuko's desperate pleas to spare her daughters and to her daughters, Kimura makes it clear he has zero intention of releasing them. Now the game has two equally strange endings that both result in Kimura's death. The black ending, as it's called, ends in Kimura impregnating <laughs> either one of the three women <laughs> and ultimately deciding to keep the child. A few days later, Kimura is at the subway station when he falls onto the train tracks and is hit by a moving train. And perhaps the even weirder red ending results in the game showing a scene of Aoi brandishing a knife which she uses to ultimately end Kimura's life, also hysterically laughing. The game ends with Aoi being questioned by the police for Kimura's death. Now the game's reception is a tale of cultural contrasts and differing sensibilities, Defer as the world both <laughs> in Japan zagrać. and abroad feels extremely dobrze. differently of the game. In Japan, Aha, the initial reception of the game, like many of Illusion's releases, was somewhat Ale muted. Illusion, after all, have produced many adult-themed games, and the Japanese gaming community, particularly those indulged in erotic games, or rogue as they're called, viewed it as just another addition to the genre. However, it wasn't until three years later, in 2009, when the game began circulating internationally, notably via online platforms like Amazon, that the controversy truly started. Keith... Hey, why do Japanese games do this? I don't know. Bars, a British MP, brought the issue into British Parliament after discovering that the game was being sold on Amazon, despite not being officially distributed Queen or supported outside of Japan. Amazon then removed the game from sale on its website as a result. In May of the year, the Jordan has to ask Jordan to ask him 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 to 
The same year, the pressure reaches peak when the ethics organization of computer software, which is the Japanese rating organization yeah, for adult know. games, restricted the sale and production of the game, effectively banning it globally, including in Japan. Though the restrictions didn't stop well, there, Australia the completely criminalized the game's <laughs> yes. distribution due yeah, to a campaign was... led by the Women's Forum of Australia. Yeah, well, yeah. In Argentina, the game ranks Sato, as the yes. only that video game to be PM's. illegal, and even the US Supreme Court took note with Justice Samuel Alito using it as an example of the base themes of Jakby mały 9 lat to mega lubiłem się zagrywać w Thrill Kill potem mając 15 16 dowiedziałem się ta gra od około 10 lat zbanowana a co to game jest? Was willing to exploit. Amid the backlash some even defended the game arguing that while it's distasteful Ty, it's no not fundamentally different from other games that involve violence and murder Illusion on all of this was bewildered by the international yeah, response and reiterated that the game was in complete compliance with Japanese yeah, laws yeah. and had never been intended for sale. Dużo Japończyków to piwni gucciacy bez dziewczyn se tworzą takie gry? Nie, no to brzmi jak wniosek ojca Janusza. Na pewno jest inny powód. Outside of Japan. However, due to the controversy, Illusion removed all references to the game from their website and ceased its distribution entirely. The game's infamy had an immediate effect on several other Japanese erotic game publishers, prompting them to ban all foreigners from their websites. Companies like Minori, Naval and Visual Arts banned foreign IP addresses and even went as far to tell foreigners to yeah, move to Japan if they wanted to play their games. Yes? These actions obviously that criticism of xenophobia się, within the Europe. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Gay community. Shit, Despite all the controversy, Illusion continues to produce adult-themed games. Notable titles like the creatively named Honey Select and VR Kanojo emerged, leveraging enhancements in VR. Latka. Fortunately, these games are slightly more legal in their themes. But the key question is, did the game tarnish Illusion's reputation irreparably? Well, the game did attract widespread condemnation, especially internationally. Within the adult gaming niche, Illusion still remains a recognized name. Splatter School is a Japanese video game known for its extreme violence. It was developed by indie game creator Jast USA and Dzięki it's a side scrolling game that combines elements of horror, gore and survival. Dzięki Regal. Ale co to jest ten Dark Wood? Czekaj, bo się boję zobaczyć. A to jest jakiś horror. A, no przecież ja to pamiętam. Już widz mi to kiedyś wysyłał. To może nawet ty. No, ale co w tym dobrego jest, to nie wiem do, do dziś. The game has gained notoriety for its graphic content and is often discussed in the context of its stream horror games. Splatter School is set in a high school environment Dead that turns life? nightmarish. Co to jest? The player takes on the role of an... Czekaj, bo aż się boję teraz po tych liście gier pokazuje... Aha. Powiedz mi, co to jest w dupę za gra? Co to jest? Czemu się nazywa Dead or Alive i wygląda tak? Chyba się obrazki komuś popije przy... Jordan, miałeś jedno zadanie. Ty odpowiadasz za japońskie gry w tym TV gry. Extremely you are subjected to some of the worst death animations I've ever seen, with some of them involving multiple of the aliens forcing themselves on your character. The school is designed to be maze-like, with various classrooms, corridors, and hidden areas that the Jordan players must explore. The gameplay itself oh, yeah, involves yeah, exploration, yeah, puzzle yeah, solving, and just general evasion, as the primary objective is to survive and escape the school. Now, Splatter School and Demonophobia are extremely similar, as they're both side-scrolling, gory games made in Japan. I don't think one is worse than the other. They both feature extremely gory and gruesome death. Ah, oh, yes. Eh! Kiedyś się wczyta. Animations are not thematically depraved. In the game Fun, the game opens up with a Fun. screen reading that this game was made by a demented person, which is definitely accurate. The game first takes us through a red environment and we get introduced VR. to our character. He tells us a story, saying since that he was young, he's always wanted no, to force guia, himself guia. upon people, starting with all the girls at his school and now Wait, his own mother. After Marfi. reading his story, you can drop into a long winding hole and at the bottom there's a real photo of a headless woman, with text overlaid on top of it saying hello mum. Clicking the photo takes you into a room with the mother, who looks to be decomposed already, even though you can still talk to her. 
You basically insult her before ordering her to do something that I can't describe. The game then cuts to the decomposed mother laying on the floor with text simply reading if you click on the mother, you're transported to what's called the pleasure room, where you have a choice. The game asks if you're a psychopath and if you want to see more. You have two options being yes and yes. Inside the psycho room holds some of the worst imagery I've honestly ever seen. There's real gore of women in terrible scenarios. I can't even begin to describe a single one of these images without my channel being entirely nuked. But just know you don't ever want to play this game. The game has garnered somewhat of a cult following despite its terrible contents but people praising the game and of course saying they're having fun. This is a video game that emerged from the depths of the internet. Made famous for its disturbing content, it first appeared in 2015 on the YouTube channel Obscure Horror Corner, with some people thinking that they themselves created the game. The game itself is a first person game that takes players through dark maze-like corridors with minimalistic graphics. The game's environment is eerie and disorientating, with a clear lack of objective or narrative. As you walk through the maze, you encounter various disturbing audio clips, like edited versions of Hitler's speech, or distorted screaming sounds, and images that will suddenly flash, including references to historical events, random disturbing imagery, and for what it's most known for, an uncensored image of PC backwards. The gameplay is largely exploratory, with players wandering through these unsettling corridors while being subjected to a series of audio-visual dissonances and disturbing content. The lack of context or explanation for these elements contributes to the game's mysterious and unsettling nature. Sad Satan was reportedly discovered on the dark web, a part of the internet obviously known for its anonymity and subsequent illicit activities. The YouTube channel Obscure Horror Corner claimed to have found the game on a dark web forum, which just further adds to its mystique. The game garnered attention not only for its bizarre and disturbing content, but for the fact that some versions of the game were reported to contain even more illegal images. And even malware, making it even more dangerous to download and play. This entry is a little different. As mentioned earlier, Eric Harris is one of two perpetrators involved in the attack <laughs> on Columbine High School, which ended up being one of the worst shootings in modern American history. Obviously, the news and such talked a lot Czekaj, about no, the attack. One of the things they chodzi. focused on was Harris's enjoyment of the game Doom and the possibility that Doom inspired the attack. Harris didn't simply enjoy playing Doom, he also enjoyed making custom maps for the game, of which he made several, with most of them being empty deathmatch maps that are meant to be enjoyed with a friend, like one of his maps, Bricks, where he thanks his good friend Dylan Klebold for helping him playtest the map. But one that really sticks out and is particularly disturbing is UAC Labs. <laughs> UAC Labs was made in 1996, <laughs> which would be three years no, before the incident, and it's said to be modeled Ale after the high school itself, and it's the only one that features enemies that try to fight you. You start outside a building only with a pistol, and gradually move inside where you find a shotgun. Some people think the map Brakuje was created so the two can strategize and plan out their attack more effectively, though that is merely speculation. Though you can still find and play most of Harris's maps today, three of them you still can't, <laughs> being Thrasher, Assault, and Real Doom. The FBI permanently scrubbed these maps from the internet and still no one knows why. The fact that UAC Labs wasn't taken down, yet these three were, leads me to believe that these maps harbored something even worse. Słyszę z krzaki, 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 słyszę z krzaki